I'm joined by a member of Israel's Knesset and former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Dannon. Mr. Dannon, welcome. Thank you for having me, Mike. So U.S. officials are being asked about Israel withdrawing much of its ground forces from southern Gaza. Let's play this clip and I will have your response, sir. It is really just about rest and refit for these troops that have been on the ground for four months and not necessarily, that we can tell, indicative of some coming new operation for these troops. They've been on the ground for four months. Uh, the, the, the word we're getting is they're tired. They need to be refit. What do you say, Danny? Let me be very clear, Mike. The war is not over. It's far from being over. We will continue the war until we bring back all the hostages back to Israel and eliminate Hamas. And we are getting ready for the next uh, operation in Rafa, in the city of Rafa. Uh, I think we will wait a few more days. If there will be no deal about the hostages, we will step into the city. We will uh, fight the Hamas battalions who are there. Uh, and we will uh, see what we can do about releasing the hostages. We know we waited for a very long period of time to negotiate with Hamas. If they are playing with us and with the U.S., with the, with the Qataris, with the Egyptians, they will find out that we know how to fight and we will find them even in Rafah. There are concerns about Iran potentially retaliating against Israel and potentially American interests. If Iran lashes out, is Israel ready? First of all, we take those threats seriously. We, we are on high alert here in Israel, but, you know, life is continuing. But the military has very impressive uh, air defense system. And I can tell you as former uh, deputy minister of defense that uh, I feel that we are ready for any threat coming from Iran. And if they will dare to send the uh, UAVs or missiles from Iran to Israel, they will pay a heavy price. Uh, we hope it will not happen. We have no interest to to start uh, another front with Iran. So far, they're using proxies against us. But if they will make that mistake, they will pay a heavy price. Today is precisely six months since this conflict began. I'm sure it feels much longer for the families who have hostages being held. What are your reflections six months into this conflict, sir? You know, we, we believe that it will be over by now. We hope that we will see the hostages back home. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen. We were able to release uh, only a few of them. Uh, and the people of Israel, they are praying for the hostages. They are thinking about them. And, and we are determined to do whatever is necessary, how long it, it will take in order to bring them back home. You know, you have Americans, you have Christians, Muslim hostages. You know, many people are praying for them from all around the world. But when you deal with Hamas, there is no logic. You know, it's not like kind of negotiations. You think, let's have a, a, the middle ground. Let's find a deal. With them, you know, they have, they have an interest that nobody can understand. That is why I believe that the, the only way to finish the war is to go all the way with force and eradicate this evil terror organization. Do you worry about what appears to be some friction between your prime minister and President Biden having an impact? Absolutely. You know, uh, at the beginning, uh, we saw President Biden coming to Israel, standing with us, and we appreciate the, the support that we receive from the U.S. But, you know, real friendship, it, when it's becoming hard. And now it's becoming hard when we see the international pressure and we expect our ally to stand with us. You know, you cannot say we support Israel, but stop the war. You know, we cannot stop the war. If we stop the war now, it means Hamas won. And if Hamas will win this war, you will see the enemies of Israel from Tehran, Beirut, Damascus, you name it, that they will come against us. That is why it became an existential threat. So we expect our allies from the U.S. and other countries to realize that they have to stand with us until we remove this threat from the area. Are you concerned about some Democrats in this country, particularly the most liberal ones, uh, talking about withholding aid to Israel and, and worried about using that as leverage against uh, the Israeli government to get action by the Israelis? Well, unfortunately, you, you have those radicals in different countries, different parties. When someone says, let's stop supporting Israel or sending aid, he's actually saying, I'm supporting Hamas. I'm supporting those savages who committed the atrocities on October 7th, the one who brutally massacred, raped, kidnapped babies. So if you don't support Israel, you stand with Hamas. 
Uh, I think it is unfortunate, but I believe that the majority of the American people stand with us. They realize that they are now Hamas is fighting Israel, but those radicals, they will fight the U.S. if they can do that. So we are in the front line, and I believe we have the support uh, of the American people. Danny Tannen, thank you very much for your time today, sir. Thank you very much, Mike.